Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome back to the channel uh, Solar EV and uh, Kilowatts. It's so I want to talk to you this morning about the problem I was getting with the uh, communication between our Eddy uh, and our Zappi, and um, the loss of communication there that was uh, indicated on the hub and the issues that was causing me, and uh, how I've gone about rectifying it. And now, thankfully, uh, everything seems to be stable again. So just a, a review of what we have. We've got uh, solar on our, the roof of our house at seven and a half kilowatts. The inverter's uh, a five kilowatt uh, solar edge inverter. Then we have the My Energy devices uh, for our hot water and charging the car. That's the My Energy Eddy, uh, which sits uh, neatly in our airing cupboard. We have the My Energy Zappi, which sits on the outside at the front of the house. That charges uh, the car. And then we have a couple of other uh, My Energy devices. Uh, one is the hub, uh, which allows you to remotely access the devices uh, and uh, collect all the uh, data. And we've got um, Harvey, uh, which allows the CT connections uh, to be uh, wired into it and then the devices to communicate with that rather than them individually needing uh, CT clamps for generation and uh, consumption. So that's uh, basically what we have. And uh, at the time we had the solar installed, we had the Eddy device installed uh, together and all working fine. And then about a week later or so, we took delivery of our Nissan Leaf and had the uh, My Energy Zappi installed. And um, everything during the summertime was working absolutely fine. The Eddy up in the airing cover communicating uh, with the Zappi on the outside of the front of the house uh, with no real issues. Um, the trouble came actually when we got towards winter, the um, evenings drew in much earlier, sun setting around sort of 4.30 in the afternoon now, uh, being in uh, mid-November, uh, and uh, temperature was dropping, and then the communication between uh, the two, um, well, indicating on the hub and the uh, zappy, uh, was dropping out. Um, and... This is causing a few issues because um, charging the car remotely on the app was no longer uh, available because the hub could no longer see the Zappi. Um, again, not maybe the end of the world because you can still go out to the uh, Zappi unit itself. You can then program a charge. So you could sort of hardwire the charging uh, cycle into the Zappi itself. So you could still charge the car no no problem at all um but the zappy being the most if not one of the most expensive charging uh, applications you can have for your electric vehicle um you kind of want it to work and you want it to work seamlessly um so yes getting a few problems with the connections dropping overnight um, and to a point actually where you could almost set your watch by it. Um, come 6.30 of an evening, it would drop out. A little red light would come up on the hub and um, that would be that would be it. Um, so I did a bit of investigative work and I found out actually that it's not the communication between the hub and the Zappi that's the problem. It's the communication between the Eddy uh, and the Zappi that's the issue. The reason for that is the ed the eddy, uh, which is the hot water heater in our airing cupboard, uh, is the master uh, because that was the unit that was set up first. You can uh, change whichever's the master, and I, and I have subsequently uh, done that in the past. But what happens is, if the eddy is the master, the eddy is communicating with the Harvey to get the CT data. Um, using that for its own uh, consumption and timing and what have you. Um, and then that data then sent to the uh, Zappi or the Zappi requests that from the Eddy for its functions. Of course, if Zappi isn't communicating with the Eddy, the Eddy being the master, then the hub can't see what the Eddy's doing. Hence, you get the red light uh, on the hub. OK, because I found this out because my my um, um, my hub is in my study downstairs in the very front room at the front of the house and the zappy is on the outside wall of that same room so there's no way that the two could be communicating with each other directly if the if the hub can communicate with my eddy up in my airing cupboard it can definitely communicate with the zappy so so when you see the red light on there it doesn't mean that it's not communicating directly it just means that it's not getting any information um, from the master 
that's communicating. So I had this problem. I thought, well, OK, how do I get around it? <clears throat> turned off, turned on again, made sure firmware was up to date. Um, changed the Zappi uh, as the master to get all the data from Harvey, etc. And then, of course, the hub then couldn't see the eddy because the two weren't communicating. So I, I knew it wasn't the, the hub communication that's the problem. It's the communication between the eddy and the Zappi uh, that was the issue. And there didn't really seem any other way uh, around this other than moving the eddy closer uh, to the Zappi. So, and that would have mean um, a lot of uh, wiring and a lot of uh, messing around. So same problem going on, 6.30 in the evening, it would drop out. So I got in contact with uh, my energy and uh, explained the problem. And they said that it's the communication between the two is a problem and that I would need an RF uh, radio, a radio, a RF aerial extension lead, get my teeth in, um, to extend the range or extend the aerial out from the uh, eddy, which I did, link is attached. Uh, ordered it from Amazon, came in a, uh, a couple of days. Uh, there are 10 and 15, there might even be five metre uh, cable options for this. Um, I choose, chose a 15 metre because I just wanted it as long as possible to make sure it reached the front of the house. Um, it ended up being too long for me, but it doesn't really matter um, because it just coils up in the loft. Um, and it was about 35 quid. I think it's 10 metres, like 10 or 15 pounds. So, um, the length of the cable isn't proportional to the cost. I think the I think the fifteen meter cable is more popular, so it's 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 more expensive. Anyway, it's really simple. It's got a male and female end. Um, you take the aerial off of the eddy. You put this uh, uh, aerial extension cable on. Screw it in. I fed it through the loft out to the front of the house uh, and um, left it kind of overnight. Attached the aerial onto the other end, of course, and then just just threw the cable over some of the um, um, roof structure uh, beams, etc., up in the loft, uh, which goes out over our gable at the front of the house. So, left it until the following day, and at six thirty came, green light. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock came, green light everything looking good until about midnight. I kind of stayed up quite late just to see if this was going to work. And it dropped out again. So I thought, ah, OK, I think we're making progress because by moving the aerial forward, it's working. It's working till later in the evening, but it's still not working properly. Um, so I went back up and off again the other day. Um, I then pulled the aerial all the way out to the front of the house. Um, we've got UPVC uh, soffits and fascias around the side of our house, uh, all, all around our house with our double glazing. Uh, so I got into the very, very far corner, the zappy right underneath us, um, and uh, I drilled a, a little hole in the uh, soffit part of the um, of the um, fascias, the flat bit which points face down. Drilled a, a small um, uh, five mil hole. And then I just poked the aerial through it. I've got a photograph. You can't really see it that well, but that's the area. But importantly, it's directly above uh, the zappy. So the area literally poking out about that much beneath the soffit, um, right above the zappy. I did that the other night and everything works. Everything's perfect. The aerial is now pointing at the zappy. There is no reason why we should lose connection now. And over the last couple of nights I've had uh, green uh, connection right the way through. So that's what you need to do. Um, it was particularly important to do this, I think. And what really spurred me on to do it was because my energy now has a link up with um, Octopus Agile. Uh, as you know from my previous videos, we've got Octopus Agile uh, account. Uh, and by shifting our uh, peak energy out or our energy outside the peak times, we're able to make some you know fairly significant savings on our costs. Uh, I'll put my link at the bottom, my referral link in the bottom. And if you're interested in joining Octopus Agile, then you use this referral link and you get 50 quid and so do I, and that'd be, that would be fantastic. So they've got a link up now, which means uh, on a, on a web-based uh, platform, uh, it's in beta mode, so they're just trialing it and it was just available to forum members at the time, but um, 
it's, it's going to be uh, widely um, uh, available, I should imagine, after testing. But if you go onto the um, My Energy Forum, you can find the link on there. And uh, if uh, I'll try and dig it out and put it on the bottom here if, if you want to use it. Uh, but the great thing about it was that it's, uh, you told it when you wanted to char charge your car, when you wanted to put some energy into the eddy if you wanted to, what your price threshold is, what you wanted to pay, um, how much charge you wanted to put in the car, or how much energy you want to put in the eddy, um, cost saving uh, options, um, boost timing, regular or, or one offs. It's really, really clever. And uh, they pull the data from uh, Octopus. They look at where the cheapest time is and they'll charge your car or uh, top up your eddy at the most uh, cost um, efficient time. So it was really important, I think, to get this sorted because I really wanted to take advantage of that. And over the last two nights, charge the car up to the exact percentage that I need at the cheapest time that was available during those uh, two evenings. So it's worked perfectly. So there you go. Um, I hope you found this useful. And if you are getting problems with it, this is really the only solution. You're gonna have to extend that aerial. It's really not a big job. It only took me about, I don't know, it took me longer to get into the loft than it did to actually um, set the aerial up and stuff and, and, and put it in the right place. So hope you found that useful and uh, thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe. There's lots more videos uh, released on our, our solar setup, etc. And Octopus Agile that uh, you might find useful. And again, I'll put the links in the bottom uh, for, uh, for the aerial and for the, uh, the Octopus uh, site. Thanks very much indeed.